Now at five, supporting our most vulnerable families during this pandemic. How Oregon's relief nurseries are helping at-risk kids across the state. Plus a little pomp and social distance. Graduating seniors at University of Portland are honored in a virtual commencement. And Portland Public School staff find some creative ways to stay connected with their students. And TikTok is just the beginning. You've got to hear it. Your news starts now. Good evening and thank you for being with us tonight. I'm Galen Etlin. We begin with the struggle for some local families through the COVID-19 pandemic. For those who are low income and were already struggling to meet basic needs, the stresses added by the pandemic can be overwhelming. That's why support from the Oregon Association of Relief Nurseries is so critical now more than ever. Morgan Romero shows you why. We are a child abuse neglect prevention program statewide. Um, we are in 16 counties across Oregon, and our main focus really is to support families where they're at. We are working with families that experience um, multiple family stressors. Hello, everyone. This is your teachers. and we're In this unprecedented time, everyone's had to turn on a dime. Literally overnight, we went from um, therapeutic preschool classrooms where we were having contact with families um, twice a week. So their kids were in our classrooms twice a week for a few hours. It went to all remote and virtual. Not only have their preschools gone virtual, so have visits to families' homes, parenting classes, and case management. Advocates say abuse and neglect are likely up, but kiddos aren't in places where other adults can see and report evidence of it. There is huge concern, so I think it's a lot of conversation of just how do we keep families engaged? What resources do they need um, to keep engaged? Relief nurseries are helping families access Wi-Fi and technology, especially in rural Oregon. Hey. Our hey. foundation of relief nurseries is about relationships. Without that in-person connection, program director Denise Glasscock says families struggle. It is not an easy thing. Um, and so we are trying our best um, if they have supports in place that we can see them on screen um, and be as much in contact with them as possible. More families are in need of diapers and food. Any sort of supplies, we were doing that prior, but now the intensity has increased. So how are we gonna get that done and keep our staff, our staff safe at the same time? Despite the challenges, every day they get it done. Activity boxes are dropped off for families and families can engage in those. They have dropped off stuff and kids wave either through the window or want to kind of open the door and that's fine. Amidst this uncertain time oh. to maintain their mission that I have. and keep kids out of foster care, it. relief nurseries work with families must go on. And showing them that they can parent and not wanting to fix them, but just support them as they realize all the skills that they have to be a great parent are already in them. Baby. Morgan Romero, get your baby. KGW News. Now, there is some promising news in Oregon's fight against the coronavirus tonight. The Oregon Health Authority reported no new deaths today. At this point, 109 people have died in Oregon. Today, 45 more positive cases were announced, bringing the total of known cases to 2,680. Oregon's coronavirus hospitalizations have also hit a new low at 92, and that's down more than 40% from last month. And here's how things are looking in Washington. The state is now reporting 830 deaths, and there are more than 15,000 known cases. More than 30 states have now relaxed stay-at-home orders. We've been seeing crowded beaches, reopened malls, and people close together at protests across the country, including yesterday in Oregon. Health officials say social distancing and other protective measures still need to be in place, though, and they worry about another potential surge in cases. If we stop social distancing altogether tomorrow, we would recreate the conditions that existed in the country in February, March. Meanwhile, President Trump is setting his focus on Operation Warp Speed, working with doctors to quickly develop a vaccine to prevent COVID-19. Graduating students are being honored tonight in a different way than they may have expected. The University of Portland held its commencement ceremony today virtually since its campus is closed. University officials spoke and there was also music from a university choral group and graduating students had their names read aloud as if they were there to walk across the stage. Senior Nick Owen is the outgoing president of the student government. He and his housemates watched from home just off campus. It was different, but still something they looked forward to. There's a, there's a real personal fulfillment that comes with making this milestone. And I don't think, I don't think anyone in my graduating class would let something like this virus and a lot of the precautions we're taking take away from that. 
I'm glad he still got to dress up too in the cap and gown. More than a thousand students received undergraduate and graduate degrees today. The university plans to have an in-person ceremony for the class of 2020 whenever it's safe. Well, distance learning is not easy. All the parents out there are going, I know Galen, it's not easy. There are so many hurdles like access to devices, the internet, and figuring out how to teach effectively. And it can all be frustrating. But our Christine Pitawanich spoke with a school principal doing her part to keep positivity up at her school. Happy Monday, Scotties! Hope you're ready for another great week of distance learning. I At Scott Elementary School, Principal Megan McCarter is doing things a little differently to connect with her kids virtually. Principal McCarter here. It is Scott Virtual Superhero Day! These videos are her morning messages that she sends out for her students. I kind of felt like if I'm asking teachers to go online and teach virtually, which is really nerve wracking, then I need to do the same thing. But it's not just morning messages on YouTube. Yep, that's Principal McCarter on the popular app TikTok. I'm a star. Reading and writing, I got like, oh my gosh, I'm like way too old to be on TikTok and doing dances. But you know, that's okay. They're happening. They're happening. Because I'm a scholar. And then I do weekly challenges. One of her challenges, a meme challenge. Like, how can you make it fun, right? Like, how can you make it cool to want to come to school and to want to do your work? And all this seems to be working. Her kids are sending her their own memes and videos. But McCarter says that this is all a team effort. On Superhero Day last week, she recognized her teachers and staff. The video, a thank you to her teachers and staff doing so much hard work. One of our board members and a couple of teachers deliver to 150 kids a day, breakfast and lunch. So it's about 1,500 meals a week. That's in addition to teachers working countless hours at one of the most diverse schools in Portland, where the majority of kids are on free or reduced lunch. So we're just all trying to work together to make this work and to, to meet the needs. And that's exactly what they're doing in a combination of ways, including Principal McCarter's fun videos, and let's not forget to mention her mixtape songs. All my Scotties in quarantine. quarantine. Thought we'd bring a little throwback. Christine Pitawanich, KGW News. We still got attendance game on our virtual platform, so keep it up, keep it up. This is your girl. Your tracks are fire. I can't rap or dance, so I'm not going to do it right now. But I sing, so let's collab sometime. Well, there are also so. So many teachers and staff out there doing what they can to keep kids engaged and having fun too. Luis Soto is one of them. He's a kindergarten teacher at Wrigler Elementary in Portland. It's a dual language school where Soto says all the teachers there are adapting to distance learning. One way he keeps things fresh is by making videos in Spanish for his kids. We try really hard to, to, to show them that we are here and, and we are optimistic and we are going to make it. Together we can, as we say, juntos podemos. He says the videos are meant to show families and students that teachers are there for them and they're not alone.